since you, you may, since we're on the kind of the separatist tendencies there in California, and one of the things you mentioned briefly earlier is that um, there's troops sent to Southern California to address this uncertainty. And I kind of wanted in, in more general terms also talk about like, um, and we know the Colorado volunteers that go into New Mexico and um, Chris Rain has done a really nice book there on kind of the, gosh, it's the second Colorado, I think, of kind of traveling all the way to Missouri and riding the prairies in Kansas. And there's a great book on like Oregon volunteers that kind of take over the policing duties in the territory. So what about California volunteers? Um, are they all staying in the state doing policing work in the South or, I mean, some of them go to New Mexico to stop that invasion attempt, but what, what are most of them doing? Yeah, I'm thinking of Glenna Matthews' book, the uh, the Golden State and the Civil War. I mean, the California mm -hmm. volunteers are, I think, are significant in demonstrating that that California could be held for the Union. Um, there were a lot of people at the outside of the war who who didn't think that it could be. Um, who thought that the sort of political lean of California through the antebellum era indicated that it would in fact go with the Confederacy. Um, these these secessionists never mustered the support to break it from the Union, but it was for a period it was touch and go. And and the commander of the Pacific Department, there were a couple different guys who who held that role were were constantly. Um, fretting over secessionists in their midst. And these California volunteers are really significant because they ultimately help preserve the state for the union. Um, and they do so um, in a number of outposts. So the major one being drum barracks outside of Los Angeles, a big federal garrison to basically ensure that Los Angeles and the rest of Southern California doesn't, um, doesn't break from the union. Yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> I was just kind of thinking of like how like today I'm thinking of Cal Southern California and LA as like this massive metro area. And I, I, I mean, it would have been like little towns throughout the LA Valley area at this stage. And yeah, frontier Los Angeles in the 1850s was a, was sort of a, a Pueblo on its way to becoming a, a small town, um, you know, probably mid-decade about 3,000 residents there. So it doesn't bear much resemblance to the LA to, that we know today. Um, at the same time, regionally, it was a really important outpost and, and it was growing rapidly. Yeah. Well, but on the other hand, if you don't have that large population in Southern California sending three, four regiments of volunteers into the basin, it, it will do the trick. Mm -hmm. 